Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this lesson, we shall be discussing Mokola by Teresa Eni. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Mokola is a poem written by Teresa Eni. She is among the few Ghanaian female poets. She is concerned about the social and economic challenges in the African society. This poem explores mind-boggling issues like poverty, married problems, economic hardship, rural urban migration, school dropouts, teenage motherhood, and the flight of three children. Mokola is a popular market in Accra, the capital city of Ghana, where it is so easy to spot troubled women, card pushers, young girls selling sachet water, storekeepers, and school dropouts. Mokola is a dramatic poem which exposes the deplorable situation of people whose lives depend on the market for survival. Let's now take a detailed analysis of the lines contained in the poem. Head bent, rags all around, the upside down pan, picking her nose, shuffling her feet, oblivious to the bustle and the calls of the driver's mate. The poet opens the poem with a description of a woman who is obviously a porter. This woman seems absent-minded and from the look of things, she has a lot of things to worry about and these worries and problems preoccupies her mind with many thoughts. This line depicts to us the deplorable state of porters who have to depend on the market for survival. She is not a seller in the market because she is presented to us as someone with rags all around the upside down pan that she uses to carry people's belongings to their destination in order to make money. This morning, she quarreled with her husband. Why wouldn't he understand that her work is very tedious and involving? Why must it all be on his terms at his convenience? This line throws light on what is making this woman absent-minded in the market. One of the problems this woman has to deal with is her husband and his domineering nature. Teresa Enim takes us to a typical African society where there is a conflict of gender roles and that everything from the man should be accepted by the woman and therefore the woman can challenge a man in anything or any way. This is a man who wants to have his way in everything without taking into consideration his wife's contribution to the family. It is quite obvious that she is compelled to be a porter because her husband cannot support the family alone. But the irony of it all is that her husband does not appreciate her efforts as he fails to realize that her work is very tedious and demanding. Move out of the way, move out I say, shouts the card pusher. None cares about his agitation. The sweat ran down his face. Tiny rivulets of disappointment and fear snake down and glide effortlessly into his dirty t-shirt. His tongue peeps out and licks a piece of sweat on his lip. As the porter is busy lamenting silently about her problems, she becomes an obstacle to a cat pusher who screams, move out of the way, move out I say. From the look of things, this cat pusher has overworked himself but is still desperate to find more work as a way to survive the harsh conditions of the market and the harsh socio-economic conditions that has bedeviled the African continent. It is obvious that a caste pusher 
is compelled to do his work, not because his work is lucrative, but because that is the only choice he has to survive the harsh conditions of the African continent. That young girl with the thin arms balances a bowl of sachet water on her head. The running nose baby at her back is supported with a faded ATL cloth. He holds in his hand a battered teddy with an eye missing. The baby whimpers. She tries to soothe him by patting his leg. He refuses to be soothed and give out a loud yell. Here again, we are introduced to another character who seems to be a teenage mother with thin arms selling sachet water. It is obvious that this teenage mother has been overburdened by the sachet water on her head and the baby on her back. Her faded ATL cloth throws more light on her pathetic situation. To make matters worse, her baby is crying and she tries to sue the baby, but the baby seems not to be sued because what the baby needs is food and not soothing. The young girl from all indications is not prepared to be a mother and her job of selling sachet water is not lucrative. However, that is the only means of surviving the harsh conditions she is faced with. Put him to breast milk, one woman commands. I can't, she says. I have no breast milk. Here, we come across a concerned woman who is obviously bothered by the loud deal of the teenage mother's child and advises her to put the baby to breast milk. But she replies, I can't. I have no breast milk. The lack of breast milk depicts that the teenage mother herself is starving. It also goes to reveal the fact that the teenage mother is malnourished. So therefore, she cannot produce breast milk to feed her baby whose life depends on her. The children run in and out of the stalls, followed by the shouts of the storekeepers. Heedlessly, they continue the catch me if you can, running recklessly through the overcrowded markets, urchins and school dropouts, bread on the cocktail of street delicacies, Mokwala has it all, another face of the great city. Here, our attention is turned to children who have turned the market into a playing ground, playing the game of catch me if you can. These innocent children are identified as urchins and school dropouts who will be leaders in the society in the future. The future of these innocent children who are playing in the market is at stake. Their moral, social, emotional and academic life are compromised. These children seem difficult to control from all indications and from the way they engage in the storekeepers in a game of catch me if you can. Their lives also depend on the markets which is faced by numerous challenges and potential dangers. Teresa Ainin ends her poem by informing readers that the number of poor children and school dropouts whose lives depend on the cocktail of street delicacies increase daily or increase day in day out. The major themes we come across in this poem are poverty, economic hardship, rural urban migration, the flight of street children, gender roles, and teenage mother. Thanks for watching this short video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.